Hi everyone, I'm Brian Demers, and today I'm going to show you how to build and parse JWTs with a Java library named JJWT. JWTs are used for a variety of things nowadays, not all of them good. Um, the typical usage though is you have you have to encode data that you want to then cryptographically verify on the other end. So think microservices or some stateless operations. JWTs are commonly used for OAuth access tokens. So if you're trying to validate an Okta access token, I'd recommend you use one of our helper libraries directly. The Java one uses JJWT under the covers. Now let's use IntelliJ to create an example project. Back to our new project, standard maven, java 1.8. I call it com.octa.developer. And the artifact ID is jjwt example. IntelliJ likes to drop my dashes, but I like to add them back in. Give it a unique project location. So my module name is JJWT example, and we'll click finish. Of course, IntelliJ warns me because the directory doesn't exist. I'll let it create that. I'm going to tell IntelliJ to import the project automatically with auto imports. All right, so first up, I need to tell both Maven and IntelliJ that I'm gonna compile at a source and target version of 1.8. So I have some common props here. Um, so 1.8 is my source and target, and I'm using UTF-8 for the source encoding. So next up, I need to create some dependencies. So JJWT, typically you'd import three dependencies. The first one is JJWT.API. The version is 10.7, sorry, 0.10.7. For harder work uh, on the next release and soon after that will be a 1.0 release. So dependency, the next dependency is JGWT impl. Again, the same version. This time, we need to change the scope to runtime because we don't want to compile against the runtime implementation, just the API, which has the interfaces. And last up, we have a dependency. We need a JSON parser. So we're going to use the JWT Jackson module, which uses Jackson, but you can also use for JSON and upcoming support for JSON as well. It's the same version, and I'm also going to use the scope of runtime. So that's all you need to do. Basically, it's just this dependency that you're really concerned about, but um, if you actually want to run the project, you need two more. All right, so let's go create a package. We will call it com.octa.developer to match our group ID and create a simple main class called app example. All right, so let's create a main method public static void main string args. All right, so far pretty standard Java main method. So JJWT, you would typically use a helper slash factory class named JWTS. JWTS. And this provides uh, a fluent interface to get you started. So JWTS, we can use a builder, which will give you a JWT builder. And from here, we can just start adding claims. So I'm going to set the subject to my name, Brian Demers. I'm going to set this, the audience 
to whoever's watching this video. So video demo, and that's just a string. And next I'm gonna set an expiration time. So let's use Java instant. Call it now, instant.now. No, so we set the issue that time. So we can do date from instant, which is now. So that'll say the time this JWT was created, and then we want it to expire. So let's set expiration of date dot from now, and we want to add a little bit of time. So we're going to say this is valid for a minute. So let's do plus one minute. Um, I also want to create a custom claim. So out of the box, JW, JJWT supports all of the standard claims with nice setters for you. But of course, you can use any claim you want in a JWT. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to add a claim of 1d20. And I'm going to give that value a new random next int 1 through 20, right? All right, so we're basically rolling a d20 here. So I've set some claims. I've set the expiration. Now all that's left to do is, is um, sorry, is turn this JWT into a string. So I can call compact, which basically takes everything, compacts it into a single string. So this returns a string, so we do string JWT. So that's my JWT string. Nice fluence interface. And of course I need to do something with that. So let's just print it. All right. So I can just print the JWT string. Now if I run this method, you will see that I have a JWT. However, this only has two parts. It has a header and a body. So it's missing a signature. That's because I didn't tell JJWT what it should use for the signature. Now, in my case, I'm going to use a shared key, um, but you can also use public key cryptography as well. So let's create some random bytes here. So I'm going to go to my terminal. Of course, it takes a second to open up here. Oop. I'm going to use OpenSSL to create a random base64 encoded string. There it is. All right. So now we'll say my byte array, it's called secret, is base64 encoded string. So we need to decode it before we turn it into our bytes. And then we'll decode a string, which is what I just generated randomly. Now we can go and tell JJWT to use this key to sign. So we have a nice helper methods to do all of this for you. So we can say keys dot HMAC SHA key for these bytes. So we'll call use this secret. All right, so now when I print it out again, I'll get the signature as well. All right, here we go. So here we have the header, the body, and the signature. So if we take this JWT, go back to our browser, paste it into jsonwebtoken.io, it'll show me that I'm using the algorithm HS256, and here's all the data that is in the payload, and we apparently rolled a 13. All right, so there's the expiration and issued out time as well. And hopefully they're one minute apart. All right, 
So now that we have our JWT string, you would have some other service somewhere, some other process that needs to decode this value. So let's do that. So we start the same way, JWTS parser, and we're gonna parse the claims JWTS, and we're just gonna pass in the string. Now this is gonna return JWTS with, with a set of claims. Call it result. Oops, what happened here? Whoops, that's why, sorry. Typo. All right, so I can even print this. That'll be sort of pretty formatted for you. However, if I run this, you'll notice it'll fail because I didn't tell the parser which secret key to use. All right, so sign key must be used, right? So I can go back here in my parser and set the signing key. And I can use the same method as above. So now when I run this, it should work. Great, so now we have a JWT string, we're parsing it. So the header HS256 again, and here's my body. So if you want to print out any anything specific, so it works just the way as the creating the JWT. So you can do result dot get body dot get subjects, which would print my name, or get audience, which would print video demo. But let's just print the dice roll. Right? So 1d20, result.getBody, and this is a custom claim, so just get, and we would say get 1d20. Now if it's a custom claim and it's some other type of object, you can actually tell JJWT what the claim type is as well. So you could pass in a class. Uh, in my case, it's just an integer, and I'm just printing, but we can do this in your in integer. And that way, the get method will return the proper type. So if I run this, we'll see what we rolled again. Look at that, six, not great. Okay, so this is cool, but typically you wanna do some extra validation when you're parsing a JWT string. So built-in support, for the validation, um, so that way if validation fails, the parser will not return the results. So I'm gonna require an audience, and I'm gonna say it's a blog demo, which doesn't match JWT itself. So I run this, this will fail, Look at that, expected the claim to be blog demo, but was video demo. So let's fix that. Here we go. Cool. Oh, rolled a one. But anyway, the good side is everything parsed, we validated our audience. All right. So one last thing I wanted to talk about is expirations. So I, the expiration dates are handled automatically for you, as well as the, the other date attributes like not, not valid before claim. So in my case, this claim is valid for one minute. So instead of adding a minute, let's do something a little superficial and we'll say the, the JWT expired a minute ago. So we can just a minus. A minute. Now this will fail because I'm trying to parse a JWT that has already expired. Right? So the JWT expired. The clock skew is zero. So maybe you have some servers that 
I don't know, the clock skew is a little off. So you want to tell your parser um, to allow some some small window of, of time for your, your clock synchronization. So we can do set allowed clock skew. And I'm going to say it is 61, oops, 61 seconds. So that'll give us enough time to say our JWT is still valid. And this should parse just fine. Whoops, what did I do? So allow clock skew, subtract one minute. Uh oh. How about 62 seconds? Ah, I just, I just missed that window. So 62 seconds was fine. So I've walked through creating a JWT and parsing JWT, adding some validation and showing you how to configure your clock skew. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about JJWT, check out the GitHub project. I'll add a link to the page in the description below and remember to subscribe to our channel. We have videos coming out weekly. Thank you.